I've been asked to video document the installation of a Fly Me Auto Supercharger on a two and a half liter motor swap. This one will be pretty interesting because the customer um, allegedly blew it up. Uh, we have not even pulled the motor, obviously, to check out what's going on with it. It just got delivered here a little bit ago. So this is as it stands right now. Customer said it blew smoke all over the place. Way over there in the corner next to my toolbox, I already assembled a two and a half liter with the cams he provided and valve springs. We'll be doing a bunch of other stuff as well. This is an auto car. The customer has asked me to put in a transmission cooler as well as an oil cooler, as well as the gauges for oil pressure and temperature. So this thing's gonna have a whole bunch of cooling going on in the front end. So this is gonna be uh, quite the project. So tearing this car down, battery acid spewed all over the place, all over the fan, all over the frame, whatever else is down there. And it destroyed all the bolts that were on the bracket, the, um, the battery base. Then moving over here, that is a concern right there. The, the shock tower brace was coming across here and it just left this wide open. So uh, it's hard to control your supercharger when, yeah. Also taking note here that the power steering has that classic uh, crack in the surface. Crack as in like it's not sealed because someone bent it. So when you move this around, if you bend it wrong, it's only secured by the one bolt at the bottom. So this is open at the top. He was probably sucking in air. His power steering's probably groaning. The, uh, the intake arm that goes across the top, classic. It's broken at the front, so it's not being supported at the front. It's not the end of the world. But it doesn't appear that there was any sort of sealant on the back end here. That's not the best thing. And then the brake booster where I took it off, let's see. There is a crack right there. Yes, this thing probably had a an occasional uh, lack of lack of sufficient braking. Got all the bolts out of the supercharger. Um, finally, need to lift the car up so I can drain the coolant, uh, so I can disconnect all those hoses and get that thing out of there. But physically, it's it's not connected to anything otherwise. So let's pop under here. I got a couple of notes. I, uh, ambient air temperature sensors just hanging out. Customer has this weird under tray that decreases your cooling because on the NC, air has to go in and it needs to be forced up into the radiator. But in this case, air can leave out of the bottom, so it's not forced into the radiator at all. Here, we got all this stuff apart. Found a couple of other things that may be of concern. You see that mess down there? It's not from disassembly. It's actually because it appears the backside of this supercharger has been leaking uh, for one or another reasons. It, it may be leaking internal oil, it may be leaking something else, I don't know. But of large concern is the inside of these ports has a bunch of metal. So you see all those little shiny bits. And um, Well, the third cylinder is the one that was lost. So the fact that there are shiny bits in all the other cylinders is concerning as that would mean it exploded backwards and then was distributed back through the whole supercharger. So if we want to reuse this one, it's going to have to get a proper proper rebuild and cleaning. So if we look down in cylinder three, you'll notice that one of the valves is very open and the other one is uh, not as open. A little hard to see there. Uh, but that's at the same time that cylinder two is actually open. So those valves are definitely jacked. And then of course there's all of the metal shavings on all of them. But if we come around to the other side, you'll see port number one, two, and four are fine looking. And number three is blacked out with metal shavings. We've successfully removed the motor now. So now we pop over to here. Let's take a good look at that damage. So it appears that that rod is no longer connected to anything. Figured I'd do a teardown real quick on this motor. So as it appears, the, uh, the rod, if you look right there, the rod has wrapped itself around and penetrated into the wall of the uh, of the cylinder, as well as it was on the outside, as you could see from the previous photos. The rod bearing is still fine. That thing still spins pretty freely, but you can see the this whole assembly's been destroyed. Come around to this side. Yeah, pistons cracked and rotated, as well as there's P to V, as you can see. But you can see the, the intake valve reliefs are definitely relocated. Then we pop around here, you can see why there was P to V, as well as you can see that there are some piston remains stuck in the valve. 
And then when we uh, dropped the pan, the pan insert was very heavily damaged. It doesn't have any holes through it, but it's still warped as hell. And then we have a couple of piston chunks as well as a couple of cradle chunks there. As I'd mentioned, it looked like there was a leak in the back of this thing. And since we saw metal flakes going up into the supercharger, I figured I'd go ahead and pop it apart and check out what's going on inside. So inside is scored pretty severely on all fronts. There's a bunch of liquid um, oil, obviously, just hanging out. So that explains why we were only able to pull out that much oil when I pulled the nose off. Uh, we estimate that's something like one to two ounces. Fluid capacity on this thing is significantly more than that for sure, because it's supposed to fill this cavity. And then when you look over at the actual uh, supercharger, there's plenty of damage on all faces of it.